Sentinel-1 versus CrowdStrike is the topic of today's presentation. We see lots of investors comparing these two companies, so they'll search Google for CrowdStrike versus Sentinel-1 to try and figure out which is the better company. So we're going to try and answer that today because from where we're sitting, it's pretty clear. Now, many of you might not be familiar with the extent to which the black market flourishes in the world of computing, but there's this old school acronym that you may come across, HPVCA. Um, this acronym primarily was used to accumulate all the processes and procedures in the computer underworld. So things like hacking, obviously trying to get into systems, this used to be a function of prestige. And now more than 90% of hacking attempts are about money. Uh, freaking involved using the phone systems to manipulate, uh, to either get free calls. This was all part of creating the network that you needed to hack. Then there was viruses. That was another. Now, it used to be primarily about prestige. Now it's gotten into um, things like malware instances that try to uh, hack further into um computers and give hackers uh, access to things that they want um, so they can make money, presumably. Then there was cracking, which involved when software wasn't living in the cloud. Um, you used to be able to trade software, and there were methods used to lock it to keep you from copying it. Uh, copied software was referred to as wares, and cracking was about being able to access the software beyond the uh, protections that were in place. Um, then there was the old acronym for anarchy, which... Um, was another prestige thing where uh, people might remember the anarchist cookbook and things like that. This was the old school world of hacking. Hacking today has changed. So now 90% of all cyber crimes in the world involve money theft. And what you have are large organizations that um, come from certain places where the government turns a blind eye to what they're doing. So I took this picture in Pyongyang in North Korea, and this is their ominous hotel that they built that still remains unoccupied. And the um, cybersecurity group that we met with in Moscow, they're uh, some of the most elite uh, hacker hunters in the world. They had tracked down this criminal organization called Lazarus, which operates in North Korea out of this hotel and um, masquerades as Russians. So they try and trick uh, other um entities that they're trying to hack or that are perhaps trying to identify them and, and make them uh, think that they're originating from Russia when in fact it's North Korea. So this has all become quite elaborate and when it involves money, you have a lot of very talented individuals coming out of uh, schools in Russia that are quite tempted to um, migrate towards the dark world because there's a lot of money to be made. So when you are motivating people more by money than just prestige, then they get a lot more creative. Now, endpoint protection is what we're going to talk about today. That's what both Sentinel-1 and CrowdStrike do. Here you can see Gartner's magic quadrant. Shows Microsoft in the upper right corner there with a leadership position, but then closely behind our uh, two firms that we're going to talk about, CrowdStrike and Sentinel-1. You can see they both rank as leaders. Now, what are endpoints? Well, Gartner describes these as any device that connects to the corporate network from outside its firewall. So you can see the different types of devices offered up here, laptops, tablets, mobile devices. Uh, bring your own device, BYOD. So a lot of firms are doing that to save money. So this idea of endpoint protection um, is relevant to any large organization that has a lot of individuals accessing uh, the corporate ne network from outside, especially when you talk about working from home and things like that. Uh, certainly, uh, the pandemic would have helped the, this concept of securing your endpoint. So when we look for leaders, because that's, that's what it comes down to. We're risk-averse tech investors, and when we look at investing in a company, we want it to be a leader in its space. So certainly CrowdStrike and Sentinel-1 would be considered leaders by Gartner's Magic Quadrant. But we would extend that um, to uh, some other variables, including size, revenues, revenue growth, uh, thought leadership. And then, of course, we need to consider valuation. Now, I just posed this question because it came up when we were putting together this presentation. And the question is, have great stocks always been leaders, at least in uh, – some core offering. And it seems to be that, in fact, that's the case when you look at some of these 
uh, stocks that have performed remarkably well over the years. And I'll put a link to a research piece we did. This was about five years ago, but we took a look at trying to figure out what was the best performing tech stock ever. And that's where this table comes from. Now, when we look at Sentinel One versus CrowdStrike, you can see that when it comes to size, there's really no comparison. So CrowdStrike's six times the size of Sentinel One with a market cap of $31 billion versus Sentinel One's market cap of $5 billion. Uh, here you can see revenue growth plotted over time on a quarterly basis. You see that beautiful, smooth growth there. But um, clearly, CrowdStrike is producing a lot more revenues than Sentinel One is. When we look at growth, and you need to consider that because even though um, CrowdStrike is producing more revenue now, if Sentinel One is growing much faster, then they'll quickly catch up. You would have seen that. A great example, Zometry and Proto Labs, where that uh, the growth just uh, made Zometry uh, overtake Proto Labs quite quickly. Now, when we look at the growth of these two firms, we can start at a three-year compound annual growth rate. That's as much history as we had available and see that they're both growing and remarkably well. Sentinel One, 109% versus CrowdStrike at 67%. You look at last year's performance, it's roughly in line with that. And then when you look at quarterly, what you see in that chart and do a compound uh, growth rate there, it's 18% for Sentinel One and 11% for CrowdStrike. So Sentinel One is certainly growing faster, and the bigger you become, the more difficult it becomes to grow fast. So uh, eventually that strong growth for Sentinel One will tail off as it does with any firm. Now, when we look at valuation, you can see here we've calculated our simple valuation ratio. That's what SVR stands for. Sentinel One coming in at 10 and CrowdStrike at 12. So we're buyers of CrowdStrike at a simple valuation ratio of 10 or less. Uh, we wouldn't buy shares of Sentinel One because we've chosen CrowdStrike because we believe them to be a leader based on everything that we've presented here and also some other interesting things to consider here. Uh, one being the extent to which a firm provides their investors with useful metrics. Look at this beautiful chart by CrowdStrike. What it shows here is their net retention rate by quarter along the top there in the red line plotted over time below there in the blue line that's gross retention rate wow i mean this is super cool we want to watch these metrics very closely now uh when we're going into a recession because that's when companies that have solutions that aren't sticky will be canceled and the dollar based net retention rate you see there along the bottom that's actually for sentinel one so you want to see this generally hovering around 123%, I think, is industry average, something like that. Well, they say here they have 120% benchmark. That's probably around average. Now, when you consider what Cloudflare sells, okay, this is a great diagram that they present, which helps explain this modular approach they're taking. You can see where they've broken down their offering into these different uh, modules along the bottom there. So corp, workload, security, IT operations, management, log management, like Splunk, I suppose, data protection, things like that. These modules, each one represents a total addressable market. You can see where they've created that ladder. So they claim to have around $76 billion that they can address a total addressable market across all these modules. And then to the right of that, you see the compound annual growth rate of all those uh, total addressable market summing somewhere around $100 billion. Love this slide here where it shows, and they actually have history for this, the number of their customers who are using five or more modules, 60%, and then six or more modules, 39, seven or more, 22. So that shows their ability to expand the breadth of their offering across their clients. And um, unfortunately, Sentinel One doesn't provide the sort of rich metrics that CrowdStrike does so that you can tell the story of how the company's able to grow and monitor that over time, more importantly. Now, when we look at survivability for these two firms, you can see gross margin for CrowdStrike there, pretty consistent in the lower 70s across time. You can see for Sentinel One, also fairly consistent around 60%. So CrowdStrike has better gross margins. That means that they can uh, be more profitable in the future. But as you know, uh, platforms like these, when they scale, naturally, most of the time, gross margin increases as a function of them scaling. So when we look at runway, uh, how long can these firms survive before they need to uh, raise cash or move towards profitability. I was considering how we calculate this, and typically how we'll do it is just take cash on hand, divide that out by their losses. Well, 
you can't really use net income. That's an unfair approach to take. So I actually raised this internally, and we'll probably move to calculating this using operating cash flow. So for Sentinel-1, uh, they lost $176 million over the last trailing 12 months. So uh, just do the math there. That gives them about seven years of runway. Uh, well, you look at CrowdStrike, and they're actually generating operating cash flows that are positive, and they have a ton of cash on hand where they can start to supplement some of their weaknesses. And to find out the strengths and weaknesses of these two offerings, we looked at Gartner's report and dug into that. Um, here are some of the mentions, mainly the cons for CrowdStrike. So it scores poorly for its pricing. Uh, and it says that they're now pricing more aggressively in 2022. Imagine that. Uh, they have less tactic and technique coverage than other vendors in this external uh, objective measure of the competency of 30 different providers, uh, this MITRE attack. They talk about these phase four test results, just a way of measuring the effectiveness of solutions. Uh, they don't provide on-premise management options for air-gapped or low-bandwidth environments. They don't support Microsoft Windows Server 2003 or XP OSs. Both those items could be potentially solved through either spending some money or acquiring another firm. Uh, they say here CrowdStrike's approach to XDR is immature. So what's XDR? Well, it's this new label they come up with here. You can see it described along the top. It was uh, 19, or 2018 that Palo Alto Network started using it, and now it's an industry acronym. Um, less important to know how, how that works. More important to know that Gartner can innovate their way out of these problems. So um, Gartner, uh, sorry, uh, CrowdStrike. So Gartner goes on to say that the strengths for CrowdStrike are market understanding, innovation, and customer experience. They mention innovation multiple times, so shouldn't be a problem. Now, when it's uh, interesting to look at Sentinel-1 and to compare these two firms in terms of um, how they might complement each other or compete, Sentinel-1 has 35% international revenues, while CrowdStrike has just 30%. And what's interesting here is they talk about Sentinel-1's major presence in the Middle East. Well, perhaps uh, CrowdStrike isn't operating there, and these companies aren't stepping on each other's toes too much. You see here where they say that Sentinel-1 supports legacy Windows OSs, so providing that overlap that um, CrowdStrike doesn't have, one of their cons, right? And then here they say, well, Sentinel-1's marketing execution score uh, is impacted by its lower brand awareness. Yeah, well, that comes down to thought leadership, and we don't believe that's uh, putting up uh, banners at sporting events. That's usually when CTOs talk to one another about solutions, and when a great solution comes about, then uh, that thought leadership sort of establishes itself in terms of the breadth of companies that are using it. So uh, they say here Sentinel-1 could... Um, welcome deeper integrations with network security solutions. Again, from major network appliance vendors, something that comes from being a mature company. So the question you might ask here is, well, is there enough opportunity here for both these firms to flourish? And there certainly has been. They don't appear to be uh, running into problems with one another. Now, things to consider, the, uh, usability, so that would be mentioned in that Gartner report. Uh, support and uh, customer service is said to be a big focus of CrowdStrike. Costs are more expensive. Breadth of offering, you saw that with the uh, slides on CrowdStrike's module approach. And then you need to consider at each module level the competition. Um, the ground truth really is do you have new customers adopting the platform, especially during a recession? And be aware that total number of customers is a metric these firms often provide. That may decrease as companies look to reduce support costs. So um, there was an example of that. I can't recall the name of it, but their total customers decreased, and they said that's a function of us getting rid of the low spenders that are just demanding uh, tons of resources and not um, providing enough revenue to justify those support costs. So be aware of that. Uh, customer, or, uh, these sort of firms will clean house when uh, recessions happen. And then, you know, do existing customers increase their spending over time? Very important. And we see that uh, happening with CrowdStrike, and they're providing us with the metrics we need to measure that. And what's happening now is a great thing. So we have a recession. The tide is going out. And all those companies out there selling SaaS solutions that were um, largely just hype, 
uh, they're now being scrutinized very heavily at the C-suite level. So when you see firms that start having net retention rates sink or gross retention rates drop, that's a function of their solution not being very sticky. So you want to pay attention to that. Just to conclude, uh, both firms offer compelling ways to play the growth of endpoint protection. CrowdStrike clearly enjoys a scale advantage. Uh, we always choose leaders, so it's an easy choice to um, go long CrowdStrike, which we are. And as I said, we uh, will probably add at a simple valuation ratio of 10 or less. Um, and of course, investing in both is always an option. Now, I've put up another video here that you might want to watch, but before you click that, please click this Nanalyze logo on the icon, or the icon on the right here. Subscribe to our channel. That helps support our work. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video today.